Good day, I'm Carleen Brown Thompson and this is your JIS News for January 21. Scores of jobs are expected to be created with the establishment of a new recycling company called Jamaica Recycles. With over 120 tons of solid waste entering the Riverton landfill on a daily basis, the company is expected to generate 100,000 tons of recyclable material annually. Prime Minister Portia Simpson Miller says the initiative will not only help to keep the environment clean, but will also act as a catalyst for new investments. Recycling plastic on paper provides us with a means of earning for an exchange while providing jobs. This environmental project is not only assisting to make our environment clean, it has the potential to create about 100 jobs. Jamaica Recycles, which currently processes waste, paper and plastic, plans to expand production to include electronic equipment, industrial plastic, glass and metals. The government is asserting that the national sports policy will be multidimensional as it caters to all sporting disciplines being pursued by Jamaicans. Minister with Responsibility for Sport, Natalie Nita Headley, says the policy, which is now a white paper before cabinet, will also be impartial as it won't discriminate against race, social class, gender or disability. The minister was speaking at a media briefing for the 18 athletes who will be participating in the 2013 Special Olympics World Winter Games in South Korea. For the first time, Jamaica will also have two participants in artistic skating. These young men and women are not to be taken lightly. They are true athletes and have spent enormous amounts of time training. The Special Olympics World Winter Games begin on January 29. The government is reinforcing its support for e-learning as a critical development tool for education. Technology Minister Philip Paulwell was speaking at the launch of edufocal.com, an interactive website for students sitting the GSAT and CSEC exams. How do you enable a poor Jamaica to be on the same level as the Japanese student, as the American student? Because this is where the technology now bridges that gap and where we can indeed become first world in a much shorter time than 2030. To access edufocal.com, persons can purchase yearly subscriptions for $2,000 or monthly subscriptions for $200. Education Minister Ronald Thwaites says Jamaica needs to formally establish a set of principles that will keep the society together. The minister who was addressing the Kiwanis Club of North St. Andrew said moral values are important to the development of the country. What we need to do is to determine a set of, of principles, a set of, of, of canons about ourselves as Jamaican people that is going to unite us and, and, and dispose us towards those things, difficult things that we must do, that we can do in order that we achieve the goals of development of sufficiency, not for some, but for all of our people. The minister added, however, that Jamaica's situation was not entirely dismal as civil society institutions have ethical principles that persons should adhere to. Meanwhile, the education minister says he will be working to strengthen the Parent Teachers Association of Jamaica. While on a tour of the Ferguson Primary School in Manchester, he said parents needed to play a more active role in their children's education while reinforcing the positive values taught at school. No matter how the buildings are pretty, no matter how excellent the teachers are, we will never succeed as a nation unless we have a link, a strong and unbreakable link between the parents and the teachers. Jamaica and Cuba are strengthening their bilateral relations to further develop various sectors of society. Both countries reaffirmed their commitment at a recent function to celebrate the 54th anniversary of the Cuban Revolution. Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade Minister Senator A.J. Nicholson said Jamaica was grateful to Cuba for that country's continued support in areas such as culture, education and agriculture. Many developing countries including within CARICOM and the wider Latin American region, can and do testify to the wide-ranging benefits of Cuba's invaluable assistance and cooperation. More than 200 Jamaicans are currently studying in Cuba, while over 200 Cuban specialists, mainly in the fields of health and education, are currently working in Jamaica. 
And that's it for JIS News today. I'm Caroline Brown Thompson. Thanks for watching.